Hello, my name is Aisha Brian. PM Personality Profile is the show. Welcome. My guest tonight, he's former Ghana ambassador to the USA, former education minister. He's former minister for trade and industry, former minister for communication, one time acting minister for energy and mines, Dr. Echos Piogabra. My guest tonight. Good to see you. It's been a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been up to many good things. I'm sure it's been A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, A, B, M. <laughs> many things with A in it. That <laughs> is for the continent of Africa. So anything that has an A in it, that represents Africa's aspirations, Africa's development, Africa's growth, I will be counted amongst okay. those who will be happy to do something in that general s s s space or sphere. So... I've been busy. And how has it been so far? Challenging, as with all things in life, but especially in the last couple of years, as well as the last few months, as most Ghanaians know, mm. we've all been going through a very, very severe financial drought um, with all kinds of haircuts. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> people are wearing Zakura all over town, as you know. And others are wearing pony, right? Well, all kinds <laughs> of hairstyles. You know, so we are in the, in the period of hairstyles. And haircuts, but some of if you're not careful, you get beheaded. <laughs> if your hair you don't have enough hair on your head in this period of time, you will lose You'll the whole be head. In trouble. <laughs> so it's a very dangerous time to be in. It is indeed, mm. and I'm happy you talk about business. So I want us to start on a business note. I mean, looking at the challenges facing us, businesses are already crying over the um, devastating um, fall of the city. Um, the most businesses are crippling, high inflation, producer index price, and what have you. There's actually uh, predictions that in 2023, most businesses will collapse. And that means a lot of workers will, going ho will be going home. As former trade and industry minister, how do you feel about the situation? Well, I, I feel very sad, not only because I was trade and industry minister, but um, because I'm a Ghanaian, mm. and I know the history of Ghana fairly um, intimately. Um, and basically, we've whittled away all the progress and the accumulated wealth of yep. our nation that was begun pre-colonially, before the, the colonialists left, the white people left Ghana's, um, Ghana in the hands of the CPP and Kwame Nkrumah. Mm. And over the last 50 years, I think we've just basically misused most of the opportunity that we've had to develop our country the way our forefathers and our own parents and grandparents mm. had hoped for us as a people. Mm. And so we, have, we are collectively to blame if somebody wants to lay blame anywhere. Mm. But sim sim simply because most of the current crisis began with the current government they have to take some, if not most, of that responsibility. Okay. Because they were left with a fairly good um, economy by the previous ongoing Mahama administration. And um, the way they went about mis understanding the economy over um, representing and as it were overestimating their own strength and capabilities. Mm -hmm. You know, all this, we, are the, we have the men, we have the men and you don't have any men or women <laughs> type of thing, which was part of the campaigning in the 19, 2016, 2016 election. 2016, yes. It's now basically coming to haunt us. Mm -hmm. Because when people became a little um, inflated with their own capacity and their own importance, then they let need for taking precautions about expenditures. Yeah. They let it go out of the way. Um, Many of the things that our current president promised us when he was being sworn in, that he would take care of the public purse, that he would not appoint family and friends, um, almost all those things, that he would lay his presidency on the line yeah. to protect our natural resources, actually the river bodies right. and our gold. Most of those promises have become nothing. They've just gone out and um, there's no attempt to even apologize to recognize that we are making mistakes and we are irremediably putting our children and grandchildren into great debt. So my real concern 
as a former minister is the fact that, um, as you're saying, many businesses will suffer. The haircuts have started, already begun. Mm -hmm. um, many people have started losing their jobs already, both in the public sector and in the private sector. Many companies will shrink. It's not only in Ghana. Yes, even the global economy is going to have difficulties. And as we all know, when the big animals struggle in the forest, then the small ones have an even more difficult time. So it's going to be a, a very difficult year. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate because it didn't have to be so. We have so many resources that if we protected our resources better, we would have done much better. Mm. Even looking at the last government, if we, you go by the sector that I was working in, where we had a made in Ghana policy. Yep. So we were addressing like you were addressing, mm -hmm. just trying to ensure that Ghanaians will patronize their own goods and services. If right. you go into a shop, the program we had, I mean, it was so vital that we would have changed the minds of most Ghanaians if we had been given a little bit more time. Mm. Because if you go into a shop or any marketplace and you're going to buy anything, you have a lot of food juices from different parts of the world. You have all kinds of drinks from different parts of the world. You deliberately, consciously choose a product made in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Because once you appreciate that, that choice, as simple as it is, is protecting your family, your mother, your wife, your daughter, your aunt from a job loss. You then began to patronize your own. And many other countries have practiced this very, very effectively. And, and we are just not taking it seriously enough. What would give for us to get back on track? Well, very simple policies. But now that the IMF is in town, International Monetary Fund, mm. as you may be aware, or maybe not all your viewers may be aware, I had the privilege of working with the World Bank Group in the International Finance Corporation, which is basically the world's most prestigious investment bank and also um, with African Environment Bank. And so I learned a lot okay. from a lot of wise and smart people. I was just mm -hmm. am amongst them. Mm -hmm. I, was a, I, was a, I was there to learn. And it's quite clear that very simple policies about, you know, expenditure management. Yep. Don't spend what you don't have. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, every government has a budget. So you budget against expectations right if only we can produce so many tons of a particular product each year we can mm -hmm. sell it and make so much money yeah. but what about if you don't what are the precautions if you don't and borrowing for example everybody is learned even as a, a young person we learned not to borrow money to do to just consume <coughs> yep. if you are borrowing for investment that's a different story you are buying something that doesn't depreciate you know, homes don't depreciate, land doesn't depreciate, but vehicles, for example, depreciate in value. Yeah. Most equipment depreciate. So when you are making decisions and choices, even in our own private lives, we must make decisions that will ensure that we protect our family interests, our family savings accounts. But savings in Ghana have become worthless for most people just because of depreciation. So if the de city depreciates, by 50 percent as it has done during the course of last year mm. then almost everybody's bank account is 50 percent less yeah. in value mm -hmm. when you go to the market yeah. whatever you could buy last year you can only buy at no more than half of those okay. same goods whether it's a bag of cement or flour the same or, money. you know the same money. money so everybody is poorer today yeah. by at least 50 percent mm -hmm. and it's, it's just not big words like depreciation devaluation which we are talking about but the marketplace and I hope uh, the current government officials also go to the same markets that we go to. Because if they do, then the kind of behavior that we've been seeing will not have been the, sa the, ca the case at all. Mm. I mean, at a time when the country was struggling and any president will be seeing on his table every day through the Ministry of Finance, through labor statistics, through international reports, the kinds of things that should not be done. We had a, a president who chose to be flying around in the most expensive planes in the world. I mean, and I worked for another president, President Jerry John Rollins, who was a pilot, so knew how to fly planes. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to fly, by the way. Okay. So he could fly any plane he wanted, but he chose not to fly to the United States, for example, for more than 10 years as a president. Okay. When I became ambassador to the United States in 1994, I discovered that President Rollins even though he had been president of Ghana for more than 12, 13 years, had never been to the United States. Okay. Either on an official visit 
or in an, even a private visit just to enjoy himself. Okay. But as a president, he could go anywhere in the world. Yep. But this is a president who was trying to conserve Ghana's, you know, resources. Mm -hmm. Preserve it because somebody else will need it in future. Right. You know, so I was amazed that if a president Rawlings will not fly uh, in luxurious planes, even though he was a pilot, and he bought, or he was using the old Fokker plane that, you know, even Kuf President Kufo did not want to use mm -hmm. because Ghana was a country that required a modest leadership, mm. servant leadership, a man who could carry cocoa bags on his back just to illustrate to all of us Ghanaians that even if you are the president, you are the leader, you can also get involved in the task of nation building. But others came and the, all they want to do is ride in fancy cars, live in luxurious homes, build all kinds of fancy mm. buildings and rip off the country. Mm -hmm. The water bodies of the country are gone, river bodies, because of Galamse and illegal mining and all the things that you and I know. So it's a star story, but we have a country to build. Yeah. So by God's grace, without getting too political, but we, we can't help it. Definitely. We're in a country that we need better and stronger leadership. Mm. And I believe the party that I belong to, President Mahama's party, Mm -hmm. And the uh, Asirun party, Fivi Kwete's party, which will come to power, will fix the country. Well, I wish you all the best. But in all of this, um, the people who think that government has been very economical with information. Yes. And this has got many citizens worried of that course. government doesn't communicate to us, the citizens, exactly what the situation is so we can relate with them. As a former communications minister, um, do you think or are you satisfied with how government has communicated to us over the last period? Well, of course, obviously the government would, could communicate better. I'm sure the government will claim they've tried to communicate. They are on television, on radio in various languages, saying various things. But it's just that the honesty and the integrity is just not there. Okay. So these days, Mr. Dr. Baumia is no longer very effective or very impressive when he talks to Ghanaians. They, they've heard all kinds of very sweet talk from him, very impressive talk if you look at it from an academic, intellectual point of view. But the truth is that when you go to a marketplace, what is the price of tomatoes? Mm -hmm. When you are taking taxi, <laughs> how much do they charge you? It doesn't or matter. you buy young go, how much do you pay? So that, those are the prices that people are using, not all the very big words that we all learned in our various universities. Um, so in the communication area, the government certainly has not done as well as it could, but it's not only because they may not have all the professionals that they could have, they have chosen not to tell the truth in many cases. So well, we hope that things will get better because, as we, you put it, we have a country to build. Yes. But let's talk about the man, Dr. Echo Spielgabra. Who is Dr. Echo Spielgabra? <laughs> a, very, a very simple man. Uh, I used to be very funny. And okay. in, in, in secondary school, one of my teachers said he must try to stop being the class clown. Okay, <laughs> so in, a, in an average class, I'll be the one telling all the funny stories. Okay. But that, that was secondary school experience. Um, I was brought up by, in a family that took public service very seriously. Okay. So I'm basically I'm a, I'm a, I'm a son of public servants. Well, my father was ambassador to first to Tunisia under President Nkrumah. Okay. And then later to Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Hungary okay. under the NLC government, which overthrew the Nkrumah government. Okay. But he was a public servant. Okay. He was the head of. Um, well, the first African to be the deputy director of Ghana Broadcasting at the time. Okay. Um, and was a teacher at Achimota School for almost 20 years. So he took over from his own father's um, track record of being an educationist. Okay, so, so it's a family of... Inspector Josiah Spiogabra, my grandfather, was mm. famously the only African in Go Governor Gordon Gagesberg's era. Okay when he was inspector of schools of the whole Gold Coast. Wow. So it was equivalent to the Director General of Education or the okay. de facto <laughs> minister when there were no ministers at, at the time. At time. And he advised um, Governor Gagisberg when he was a member, a four-man committee was created by Governor Gagisberg to advise on the future of education in hmm. the Gold Coast. Okay. And he was the only black of the four-member committee. Hmm. They were the ones who advised 
the governor Gugdusberg about the merits of having a co-educational institution, which, as we know today, became Achimota. Yep. So as the inspector of schools in the Gold Coast, he had to look around for the land, which is today Achimota School, yeah. um, and which has educated so many people, inclu including myself, yeah. including his own son, mm -hmm. as my father, mm -hmm. and um, other people who have contributed various things. So basically, I grew up with that mindset of serving the people, serving the public. Mm. And interestingly enough, that has not changed, even mm -hmm. though I've done many, many things since yeah. then. My service to my community has always been my passion. Mm. And your mom, midwife? True. She was a teacher um, in St. Monica's and other schools in Ghana. And then, of course, became a nurse, first a midwife later, and then a poet and a writer. Mm. So she also found expression in putting her, her, her views across in a number of little booklets and publications and, and poetry while my father was doing the ambassadorial work. Yep. But together they just basically lived a very simple life and um, tried to educate their children to the best of their ability. Mm. And here we are ourselves growing gray and old and also possibly getting ready to pass it on to the next generation. Definitely. So which part of the country do you hail from? Oh, interestingly enough, since I started talking about my father, I better, I better report the fact that even though my father comes from Cape Coast mm. and my mother comes from Second D, mm -hmm. so I'm both Western and Central region, yeah. but I guess by matrilineal inheritance, which we practice in the Akan area, mm. I'm more a Second D person than a Cape Coast person. Okay. But people in Cape Coast take me as their own. Yeah. And of course, Second D can't do anything but accept me as their son. Who won't? <laughs> <laughs> but I was, in, interestingly, I'm born in Kumasi. Okay. Because my father was sent by Nkrumah mm. to be one of the first headmasters of non-existent schools. Okay. Today we are talking about e-schools and e-blocks and all kinds of things right. that the Mama and others have built um, and Nkrumah built as well. But at the time, my father was appointed as, as headmaster of Konogo Numasi Secondary School. Yep. Can you imagine getting an appointment as a headmaster and you go to a, 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 a location and it's all bush? There's no school. No, not a seven block. <laughs> <laughs> and that was how Ikuma <laughs> put in, the, you know, the effort to accelerate education in Ghana. Okay. So you look for the head people who are assistant masters or assistant headmasters, mm -hmm. and who therefore could be promoted to be headmaster. Yep. And took them to places around the country where there, where was, there was nothing. Classrooms. And your job was to start the whole school from scratch. Hmm. So I'm, I remember being born in Konogo In fact, yeah. that's why, if I tell you, I was born in a confidential hospital. But okay. My father was teaching and working at, at Konogo Masi. That's how I got into that Ashanti environment. And um, my mother was a nurse and a midwife, so she was delivering the babies in the town. Okay. But when she got pregnant herself and she had to deliver, mm -hmm. she couldn't deliver herself, <laughs> right? So <laughs> she had to go for her, to the hospital to, for me to Definitely. be delivered. Definitely. <laughs> and that's how my name actually became Ekwau. Okay. You see, I spell my name E-K-W-O-W because yes. the nurses, oh, yeah, Ekwau, Ekwau. That's okay. how... My name was being pronounced at the time. Right. So there, here, here we were in Ashanti region. And um, it was a very difficult time. My father naturally gravitated towards the CPP. Yeah. And he was a very strong advocate of what CPP stood for. But mm -hmm. I remember as a child, a huge fireball, you know, rising up from the backyard. Mm -hmm. Only to find out that my father's car had been burnt. Oops. By the so-called Matimohu troops. Oops. Who just didn't like what he was preaching about the independence of Ghana. Yeah. So um, I'm sure Kwame Kwame heard it, that one of his able young teachers, a headmaster, who didn't have any students yet. <laughs> so the, the, yeah, his car got bent. And in, in Konongo, at the time, mm. we're living in a building that is now a police um, headquarters for that area. Okay. And my mother was doing the midwifery at the bottom of the yeah. building. Mm -hmm. And my father and, and us were living at the top. At the top. And um, I remember this incident with the fire and the fact that I had to go to school very, very, very soon after that. And I have this experience where my older sister was going to school. She was about five years old. I was three years old. Mm. But I when I was crying that my sister who was my only playmate mm -hmm. was going to school and i cried all the way <laughs> to the school so my father had to tell the teacher at the time who was obviously was his junior in the education system 
to admit me to that school and put me in the corner somewhere so that I can just where your sister yeah, is so babysitting. So basically, I was babysitting <laughs> in the classroom, <laughs> you know. So I, I actually ended up ended up going to school in the same year as my elder, elder sister. sister. <laughs> and I managed somehow to continue in that school. Wow. So <laughs> we finished primary school together. Wow. And that's why I ended up doing my common entrance at the age of nine. That's interesting. And going to Archibald School at that young age. Young and age. Continuing to university, graduating at sixteen to enter the University of Ghana. Okay. By the time I finished my degree, I was nineteen. Oh wow. That was only because of crying. <laughs> and crying to have education. Crying. So I, baby. I hope, I hope some, some people will cry for more education and more knowledge today so that their lives will also hopefully will become better. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. And so that means yeah, you grew up in Kumasi? Um, for only a few years. Yeah, for a few years. After, 19, after Ghana became independent in mm. 1958, and I'm sure Nkrumah, remembering that incident, mm. decided to appoint my father as the first African deputy director of what is now known as GBC, Ghana Broadcasting Gra Corporation. Okay. But then it, was, it was then known as Radio Ghana, yeah. and um, there was a white man called Mr. Miller, okay. who was the head of Ghana Broadcasting. Okay. But Nkrumah had a, cam a program of Africanizing the entire government service, the civil service. Yeah. And so he was appointing people who could potentially take off from the white people yeah. and hoping that they would also maintain high standards. Mm. And, and so so we that brought you back to Accra. So that brought us back to Accra. Mm. And so we're living in, at the ridge, in the ridge area. Mm. And our fence wall actually overlooked uh, Nkrumah's you know, office, okay. which was then the parliament, today's parliament house. Yes. That's where the speaker of parliament's office is what Nkrumah used to use, used to use. as his office. And we, as little boys and girls, we <laughs> would come in the morning to come and see the changing of the guard mm -hmm. with the presidential troops. Yep. Just peeping through the hedges to see the... So we were learning about public service and about duty to the nation, I mean, about... And of course, I became a young pioneer. Yeah. Uh, my mother was very 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 much um, i won't say she was too ideological but she made it clear that the service to your nation is what it was all about yeah so at age of nine ten i was recruited into a young pioneer movement mm. and many young people today don't know what being a young pioneer was, was. so even at that age we're taught things like civics okay. and social responsibility mm. and ethics yeah the do's, the do's and don'ts of life. Right. Uh, that's why I, I do A, B, C, D yeah. as a youth mentorship program. Okay. But most of the youth are growing up with very little orientation and training mm -hmm. as to the right things to do and not the right yeah, things to do. About nationalism so and all that. They, it's easy to veer off the, the, the wrong path because mm -hmm. everybody's looking for money. Right. Who can drive the fastest car? Who can live in the nicest homes? Who can marry the most beautiful woman? Etc. <laughs> so, I understand that that's human. <laughs> but what is the anchor of your life? You're right. Interesting. So, when you came back to Accra, yes. then you enrolled at Kentucky, right? Oh, yes. Kentucky, initially. Kentucky, then yes. to Wachimota, <laughs> then true. to University of Ghana. That is true. Tell me all about it. We're let's start with Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay, Kentucky Primary School, well, now Manchetaki, was uh, one of the government um, boys' schools mm. um, located in Adabraka, opposite what used to be Farish School, on the road what to the shop that we all knew young people as Kingsway Store, one yes. of the most yes. uh, exciting it's stores so at the popular. time. <laughs> but interestingly enough, I was... Well, my sister and I were just five, six, seven at the time. Mm. Used to walk sometimes from Ridge, where my father stayed, to Adabraka, to school. And I can't imagine how we walked through the traffic in those days. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my father had early morning appointments. My mother had something to do. And we had to walk on our own together our own. to school. Anyway, so we st I stayed in Kentucky for probably just uh, two years. And then... Achwata had school, primary school had just begun. Okay. So he enrolled me there and I did my last two years um, at the at, at primary, primary school. school. Before going then to from there to, to the Achwata secondary, school. secondary yes. school. How was the environment like? Definitely primary will be different. Uh, secondary will be different from primary school. Well, those school. of us who went to Achwata primary school had advantage over, over those who had never been in the Achwata certainly, environment. Certainly. So we knew the physical environment, the golf courses, the this and the that. And some of my big older classmates, bigger yeah. classmates, actually yeah. used to bully 
you know, <laughs> they their, own oh, their own classmates oh, wow. who didn't know their way around, you see. Yeah. Um, but I was fortunate that I never really got bullied mm. per se, but I also didn't. I'm sure your height helped you. I was a very small boy. Oh, really? Oh, I, was short, <laughs> I was a very short boy in, in life until <laughs> about um, the age of 14, 15. Okay. When I grew about three inches in one year. Wow. Then I became a tall person. <laughs> <laughs> so when I did O level as a f among the short people, by the time I did A level as among the All tall of people, a sudden. <laughs> I, I don't know I, how I did that. <laughs> Very exciting place to be mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, we learned things like pottery, mm -hmm. woodworking. Yep. The girls learned needlework, cooking. Almost everybody. Yep. So by the time you grow up as a, an adult, you know a lot of you know manual work stuff. We're not taught to be that abas as people assume. Yeah. I mean, I knew how to sew my own clothes. Okay. But my father and mother left Ghana when, as I said, I was just nine, ten years old. To go, they were in the diplomatic service. Yeah. And they left me with an uncle, so I had to fend for myself. Yeah. So I learned very early to. I had a post office savings bank account. Okay. So at ten years old, I could go to a post office, transact business. Mm. Tell them how to withdraw so many cities, okay. so many pesos. Oh, I see. And the person will give me the record. You know, so I was very independent. Uh, very independent. At that time. You know, she gave me uh, a, a basket of sew, a, sew, a sewing kit. Mm. So that I could sew all my things, if my so shirt or if something. Your buttons button gets but off, you could very, very independent. mend it yourself. So by the time my father and mother came back um, from the diplomatic service, I was already admitted to the University of Ghana. Mm. And I decided that I will not even ask my father for any money. Okay. You could find for yourself. From the age of 16, wow. I never asked my father for one CD, for two pesos or anything. Wow. Even that's though he was that's an ambassador. In, that's interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. Very but in Achimota, yeah. um, what kind of student were you? <laughs> well, you want to talk to my classmates. I was, um, <laughs> I was, I tended to be better than average. Let's okay. put it that way. Okay. Until... My, because I was probably too young, and one of my teachers actually wanted me to be made a day student, my, one of my white teachers. Why? Well, because um, unknown to myself, I was also radical in my thinking. Okay. And so, because she was misbehaving himself, the <laughs> teacher was misbe misbehaving, <laughs> I organized, or I helped organize some <laughs> students to demonstrate against him. Against him. And we organized uh, a meeting with him in the... Jamfi House, that was the house I, I was in, okay. in the common room. And there was a barrage of accusations against him for all kinds of things. Wow. So he got very red in the face and walked out of the, the common, ho common room. Mm. And I didn't know I, I was the organizer, but <laughs> the, the prefect who is alive today told me later that you, you are the one who helped to organize this <laughs> matter. Eh? And the, the, head, the, head, the, the master is not happy with you. So actually, he wrote in my school report that, and I quote him, were I not to know, that his father is serving Ghana as an ambassador outside the country, I would have no hesitation <laughs> to recommend that he should be made a day student. Hey. So this is my, my, in one of my white masters. She was going to make me a day student. to Because you spoke out. Because I spoke out for my beliefs. You know, so, and these things, Mr. Rawlings was in the next house to mine. Okay. In Gagisberg House. Mm. At middle school, Jamfi House and Gagisberg House yeah. are together. So whether he heard some of these things from my colleagues or not, well, as down the line, when he needed somebody to come and help him to speak better to the people of Ghana, you're talking about communication. He thought about he you. He thought about me and said, can you come and help? <laughs> <laughs> and, and most Ghanaians don't know what it means to leave an international appointment mm. where you are being paid 500 well, <laughs> $10,000 a month mm -hmm. in those days yeah. at the World Bank, mm. or African Development Bank. Mm and come and accept a job that pays you $500 a month. So that was the trade-off I made yep. in the national interest, mm. which people today will not do. Right. It will not get well. well. Whilst in Achimota, aside um, organizing this demonstration <laughs> that got you into trouble, yes. what would you describe as your biggest challenge in that school? Oh, well, my parents were not in Ghana, you mm -hmm. see. So um, I was having a slightly difficult time in the classroom, I was doing very well. Yeah. Uh, by the time I left Achimata, some would say I was one of the best students in okay. the school. Okay. I won prizes of all kinds. But um, 
the life in the school itself was very pleasant. I liked most of the sports. Yeah. I played some, some cricket. I played volleyball. Okay. I became a school tennis champion. Oh, wow. And um, I made a lot of friends. So I, even now, we are all very good friends. Some of those who were my age mates or classmates, mm. we are in the so-called 68-year group. Mm -hmm. We are advanced in age, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the year. That's when we did our O-levels. Okay. And so we had lots of camaraderie. You know, we had a swimming pool. We had a, a hospital that catered to the, to the students. The food was fairly abundant and good quality mm. in those days. So we had a good life as in general. And I think we got along very well um, as students. Then go to the University of Ghana. It becomes even more exciting. Okay. Commerce Hall. Yeah. Of all places. Okay. You, you know, you, you're, 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 you're a vandal. <laughs> you're a vandal. Too much. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but again, in Achimota, yeah, what yes. were some of the expeditions that, you know, you got involved in that you still remember? You don't remember? want to know about that. <laughs> 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 I was a small boy. So, I, I, I was involved with uh, uh, peeping tumming, as, as I guess the word. You know, we're interested in our seniors who were mature enough to be dating um, other girls. Okay. And we, we, we spied on them with our touch lights, you know. So okay. we would shine a touch light. I mean, I was not, not a tall person, but mm -hmm. the idea was to shine the light so high mm -hmm. that if you are in the dark and you see that light, you say, ah, what kind of tall person <laughs> is coming towards you? Because you think the person is shining the light at this height. Yes. I mean, the, the light is here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you are getting, which is not really, uh, not really illegal, but... <laughs> you're doing things that were a little questionable <laughs> so we like to shine light okay on wrongdoing uh -huh. which i still do okay shining light <laughs> on wrongdoing and so we these seniors would run after us and we run away to hide and all kinds of things so little pranks like that mm. other than that i wasn't really involved in breaking people's chop boxes which mm -hmm. some people used to do mm -hmm. you know <laughs> So people which broke the chop boxes, they carry that practice on into life. <laughs> they, they misbehave. You give them an appointment, you, they will misbehave and then they have to be sad and removed. <laughs> you know? But I was very studious with my books. Because okay. my parents were not there, I, mm. I, I was really, I had to just stick to my books yep. and be good. Did, did I was a very good student. Did, did you ever get into trouble aside the demonstration that you organized? Oh, my, my teachers, you know, if, you, if you just have maybe ink in your shirt, or you, you know, ate some, some food, got spilled on your trousers, somebody would punish you for it. Mm -hmm. So I was getting punished a lot. I mm -hmm. must say that. Okay. I and mean, I was too young for my age. So yeah. my, my classmates were always three, four years older than myself. Okay. So uh, little pranks here and there. And I was getting punished. And then you were getting but I was punished. Doing well in school. But you mm -hmm. won't stop doing those things oh, well, that I got mean, you punished. <laughs> well, uh, if I tell you that I used to, Escape from school, right? Run away from Atwater School and mm -hmm. come and watch the famous 1215 movies. Okay. Opera Square. Uh huh. Oh, so I knew all the movies that were showing. <laughs> whether they were Italian movies, you know, whether they were karate movies, Chinese movies. <laughs> and the thing is that I'll, I'll come back to the school and I'll assemble about 15 students <laughs> and, and be telling and tell them the whole story <laughs> and show, show them all the, the, the movies, the Chinese movies. Well? <laughs> I, I was doing all the karate moves. I eventually, I ended up studying karate as well anyway. Okay. In the University of Ghana. But those were the, and, the and, things and, that we and did. And running away definitely would, would oh, yeah, get yeah. you so into I, trouble. I knew, I knew how to get it to, into trouble. <laughs> by running away. But incredible, no teacher ever arrested me or okay. caught me running away. But I'll be in school uniform. <laughs> I'll look very organized and very innocent. Okay. And I'll be in a bus. I see. Public bus. There's teachers also be in it. Mm-hmm. I'll drop off and go and see my movie and come back. And in, uh, whilst in uniform, they allowed yeah, you in? I, mean, I just looked too innocent to <laughs> be doing the bad thing. <laughs> for them to, to even notice you know, So they, they, I was in the trouble for that petty, petty thing, but not particularly for running up okay. out of school mm. and, and doing that. Okay, then then you ended up at uh, Commonwealth Hall. Commonwealth Hall. Oh, the place was something else. The notorious else. <laughs> hall. <laughs> it is a, a hall that, I'm sorry, those who don't understand that <laughs> hall and let's history and what it has achieved and they want to break it up and want to make it a women's hall and all that funny thing well um it was, a, it was an incredible time i was also prolific in those days partly because of my writing skills so i was the editor of the famous commercial echo e-c-h-o okay. newsletter of the hall mm. and this was before the computer age okay. so 
we typed the newsletter on certain um, sheets of paper that you could then, the word was cyclostyle. There was a certain technology, very, very basic technology at the time when you put a certain paper in some machine and it, you roll it. Okay. And the paper would um, reproduce and then you could make copies. So, mm -hmm. as editor of the Commonwealth Hall Echo, yeah. my responsibility was to make available a news uh, paper or rather a, news, well, a newsletter, a newspaper, every week, every Friday, the We'll go into editorial session, produce a newsletter, and it will be in the pigeon holes of all the Commonwealth Hall students mm. on Saturday morning, okay. religiously. And it was all it was for free. Mm. It was a service to our colleagues. And as the editor, you then adopted a, a pseudonym yeah. called Ko Here. There was a character called Ko Here, okay. who was the person who was responsible for maintaining ethical standards in the university. Mm. So when you are, you are editor of Commonwealth Hall, Echo, you are co here. Okay. And based on that, you have to write about the misbehavior of all the other students. <laughs> Why that girl in Water Hall, who likes to wear red and green dress most Saturdays, was found in the wrong room in Mr. Saba Hall <laughs> with a certain... <laughs> so you, you just describe the person. Everybody will know who it is. Okay. You don't mention the name at all. You just... <laughs> describe the person, so everybody so will so know. So that who, may who be person. a bit inquisitive because well, you'll be inquisitive. spying and that is true. dropping and all that there you go. to be able to do yeah, the code. I, I, I told you I was already doing that in that other school <laughs> with the torchlight <laughs> <laughs> process. So it made your job <laughs> easy. So my, my university had <laughs> graduated <laughs> to write about <laughs> people misbehaving. Interesting. Uh, and they knew you were the one behind it. Well, though my name will be, will be the editor, but okay. the university students. Student no. Commonwealth Hall students would know no. that the editor of the Echo would normally be General Co here. So nobody <laughs> attacked you? No, 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 no. For they describing actually, no, no, them? No, actually, uh, you, you become very powerful. Okay. Even though you don't mean to be. So people would want to yeah, even like to be, you. They don't like to be your friend. Oh, don't bring me. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guys will approach you as well. They try to befriend you so that you, you don't talk about their case. So you got so many that. girlfriends? Well, <laughs> uh, I, I doubled in a few <laughs> relationships, but I was also very, um, very sober. Okay. Because my, you know, studies ca came first. Uh -huh. Always. Mm. I needed to be first in class or among the first. Mm. It was surprising that I ended up going to teach at, at the Southern College uh -huh. for my national service, where they have well primus, you know, um, yeah, either the third or, or yeah, either the first or with the first. Yeah. Um, so... It was my, my, my father had, had conscientized me al along those lines. Uh -huh. But any time I came home, he said, okay, what, how was your school? he was a teacher himself. Okay. So what are your school results? I'll tell him. Oh, is that so? Did anybody do better than you? <laughs> That's all he wanted to do. Did anybody do better than you? I said, oh, well, yeah, two, three people did better. Yeah. Okay. Next all time right. you must do better than It was than implied. <laughs> you know, so how was your school result? I'll tell him. Did anybody do better than you? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Oh, wow. Okay, that, that's good. That's good. So that was a kind of orientation that I had to mm. be always the best or with the best. But, but I'm surprised as a vandal. You say you were calm. Oh, oh vandal, vandals are very, very calm. Are they? Generally, no. It's only on the ritualistic occasions okay. when we have to celebrate mm. Vandal's Day and so forth. Then everybody mm. just mm. grows wild. Okay. But the vandals were among the best students in almost all subjects, okay. in all classes, whether it's mm. business, law, agriculture whatever, they excelled. Okay. So your idea was to excel in your occupation, in your um, discipline, and on the school field, in games and all of that, but also let out steam and just be human and natural mm. when the occasion called for it. You, you mm. must be worried then uh, with oh, yes. what the University of Ghana intends to do with your hall. Very much so, very mm. much so. But... I'm, I'm leaving to the Old Vandals Association mm. um, because in our time, we got into trouble as well, if you are <laughs> looking for trouble, you know. Um, we had some ponding incidents. Okay. And four of us were taken to Labadi Court. Okay. Um, for whatever, I mean, somebody who had been ponded claimed that his wristwatch and other things had Go been lost. Then. But actually, it's because I invented a song at the time, mm. uh, which was a, a song that mimicked a song that the English used to sing against the Germans. Okay. You know, Hitler, he has got only one ball. Uh-huh. 
Rommel has two, but very small. Uh -huh. Himmler has three, but similar. And poor old Goebbels has no balls at all. So this was a, 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 an English <laughs> <laughs> marching song, <laughs> which we adapted to Commonwealth Hall marching. And that got you into trouble? Well, that plus the ponding incident. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my good friend Kojuranka, actually, who also celebrated, I think, 75th birthday recently, uh -huh. actually led a demonstration in which I played a role, uh, where we're, you know, demonstrating against what we call academic pomposity. Uh -huh. So, Aka Pompo, every Wednesday, we had to wear either ties or suits and a uh, gown and mm. go for a formal dinner. Mm. And that's the whole campus, not just Commodore Hall. Okay. And then in our hall, after we lined up for formal dinner, our lecturers would be on the high table drinking wine. I and, see. and we thought that, ah, what is this difference already? So we're, <laughs> we're looking at people who fight against, you know, inep inequity. Yep. And uh, displaying this kind of affluence and misbehavior in front of us. As so <laughs> there was a, <laughs> a decision to raid the cellars okay. of the lecturers and professors who were drinking the wine and letting us sit down as plebeians <laughs> watching them. <laughs> and so Commonwealth students went and raided the <laughs> cellar of the, oh the senior members. <laughs> and all the wines <laughs> came out. People rushed to different parts of the the campus to hide their wine bottles. <laughs> and when the lectures came, no wine. The <laughs> students had raided the whole place. So they had to find some scapegoats. And so <laughs> that, that was when I also got caught up. <laughs> so they, they used the ponding incident as a, a reason to, you know, match us to Labadi court to be mm. supposedly prosecuted for some funny <laughs> reason. But the old vandals <laughs> came in and spoke and we got discharged. And that was just another incident mm. in my <laughs> so, eventful so, so, life. So, so why red? Oh, the color? Yes. I'm not sure whether we At selected time, it or it was part of the, you know, all the halls of residence had, had, their, had color. their colors. Okay. So when I got there, I found vandals having been allocated mm. or adopting a red color. Okay. Because you, you couldn't have a, a color that would be in conflict with somebody else's color. Yep. So Aqua Fuhu had their color, the Mrs. Zaba Vikings had their color. Uh, my, we didn't know what the colors were. The only color that was that made any sense was, was red. red. <laughs> and the only place that made sense to live was on the hill, <laughs> overlooking our vassals, <laughs> you know, in the <laughs> on the bottom of the hill. Okay. So we were on the hill and we could observe. We had an observatory. <laughs> if you go to Commonwealth Hall, even now, there's an observatory okay. where you can sit and observe your vassals mm -hmm. on the ground floor I of see. the campus going through their menial duties. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, we just laugh at these people, honestly. Interesting. We didn't take, we didn't take them seriously at all. And if anybody... We'll we beat them in sports, we'll beat them in the classroom, we'll beat them everywhere. And sometimes they got beaten physically as well for this <laughs> And if anybody had words of trouble and they wore red, oh, oh, then yeah, they yeah. were inviting your trouble. No, they will not try wearing red. No, 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 no. <laughs> Unless there's a demonstration, yes. Then there's a campus-wide demonstration. Then you And that's part of many, many demonstrations against that champion regime and mm -hmm. all kinds of regimes that mm -hmm. where we had various difficulties and we were that way uh, where wear red, red band, band, um, okay. band but not necessarily Aside a red that, set or oh wow. red outfit because that red is it's a only for yeah. <laughs> interesting dr echoes Phil gabra he's my guest tonight and his former trades and industry minister former education minister former communications minister one time acting minister for mines and energy former ghana's ambassador to the united states of america man of many hearts when i return from this break he'll be telling us about all the experiences he had holding all those portfolios plus whilst growing up what did he want to become did he want to be, did he have at the back of his mind that he will one day become mm. a politician all of that plus his lifestyle and family values. Wait for me, I'm coming right back.
Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest uh, still Dr. Echoes Pio Gabra. We're really having fun on this interview. So let me ask you, Doc, whilst growing up, what did you want to become? Politician? It's interesting because my father really never talked to me about professions. Okay. For someone who was a teacher, I'm mm -hmm. surprised that I never sat with him at any time for to ask him, well, you're an ambassador, or would you like to be di a diplomat, like, like <laughs> or would you work at Ghana Brook? But interesting that most of the things I've done have kind of mirrored what he did. Yep. So by studying journalism and communication at the University of Ghana, it was almost like his work at the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. All right. So he was not there as a reporter, as a journalist. Mm. He was an administrator, but you can understand the relationship between somebody who works in GTV, GBC, no matter what he's doing, right. and me studying the subject of communication. Mm. Then I go to Ohio University, and you'll be also interested, not only did not I allow my father to fund or finance things I did at that age, 16 plus, but even when I was going to the United States, he wasn't aware. Wow. I had to, I had to find my own way, well, my first job. Look, my father never lifted a phone to call anybody on my behalf. You looked for it yourself. Yeah, even though he taught so many people at Timothy School. When I was growing up, almost all the big people in town, all the judges and all the politicians and all the businessmen, he had taught most of them. Okay. But I learned to fend for myself and not say, Daddy, uh, I've just graduated. Yeah, so can you help me to, to get a job? a job? No, 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 no. So when people come to me asking for job and help and others, well, I give them advice and counsel. Mm -hmm. But many of them do understand that I myself, even Struggled. though I could have been privileged to yep. enjoy all of that, I made sure that I did not. You did it So I had to work own. on my own. So how I found my way to the United States. Mm -hmm. Look, if I tell them my father sold my first car to me, he <laughs> sold it. I bought it. From your father? In the house. Yes, I bought it. <laughs> I was 21, 20 years old. So those who were in the University of Ghana, they know that when I became a graduate student, mm. I had a car. I wanted a few on the campus at the time, maybe 10 of us who had cars at the time. Okay. But because I got a job mm. in, in the advertising industry in Accra, mm. and um, I told my father who had a taxi, somebody was driving it in Cape Coast and was not really you, bringing the income the way yeah. my father wanted. So I said, yeah. why don't I buy a car from you? Okay. He said, okay, mm. if you bring the money, you, you get can it. take the car. Yeah. So I bought my, car, my first car for my father. Whilst Minister for Communication, yes. you actually helped to develop and implement policies, programs, um, the VAT supported in convergence, telecommunication, broadcasting. You helped in the reintroduction of the VAT. Correct. I mean, you did some really good work there for, it, for people to accept it now. What's your role, the role Very that you fast. played in all of that? Um, well, with the VAT... When I became Minister of Communication in 1997, mm. President Rawlings invited me to a conversation and he said, look, Chief, he used, used to call me Chief, um, you know, there are many things you may want to do, but I want you to focus on this thing called VAT. Yep. Because in 1995, an attempt had been made to bring value of tax into and Ghana. And didn't succeed. Under Pre Minister, Minister, then Minister Kosi mm. He didn't succeed, partly because our current president demonstrated against Again, it. Again, the Kumi Perkum. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> it had to be ended. But Rawlings knew that that was going to be good for Ghana. Okay. And so he said, look, it looks as if the finance ministry which brought it didn't understand how to explain it well. So the people. But you are supposed to be a communication professional. Mm -hmm. Find a way to explain it to the people. So, the people. so it took 18 months to do that. To do that because it's not a three-month, four-month thing. When I see the minister of finance sometimes doing a press conference, doing something, and they think they have convinced Ghanaians, I, I won't laugh, but I just know that they're not knowledgeable about the field of communication. Mm. The communication field requires far more time mm. for to change people's minds yep. if you want them to vote for you, yes. if you want them to agree with your policies, mm. if you want them to believe in something. It's not a quick and fix press conference, press release, a videotape, and that's it. No, yeah. it doesn't work that way. Mm. But I am into the changing of minds. Okay. And that's a different skill set mm. than most people have. So 18 months to convince people to Except that, yeah. that came in in 2000, mm. not a pin dropped, everybody liked it. Mm. Most business people who didn't even qualify, they were yeah. too small to qualify for that, they were running to register. Because mm -hmm. we showed them all the advantages of that, including the fact that you get free money from the government for 60 days. Yep. Before you, after you collect that from consumers, then you pay. So it's like a free credit system that the government is giving to you, depending mm -hmm. on the size of your business. Yeah. Then, of course, I also became chairman of the 
value added tax that board mm -hmm. as the first chairman yeah. to allow the institution itself to grow okay. uh, the, which is now part of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Mm. So that's all just part of... Uh, but you have held several portfolios. Janice, ambassador right, yes. to the U.S., right. you've, you've been minister in about four ministries. Yes. That's a bag of experiences. I mean, at any point in time, were there regrets? Well, the main regret, uh, which my family always reminds me of, is why I quit my high-paying international appointments to come and sit in Ghana where people don't appreciate what you're doing. <laughs> so it's more about the appreciation part. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you know you're serving your country mm. selflessly, yep. and it's not because of your family or your friends, you accept that as part of what comes with anybody who is selfless. Oh, Mandela what? went to jail mm -hmm. because he was serving his people. Definitely. Jesus Christ was crucified because he mm -hmm. was serving people. Mm -hmm. Mahatma Gandhi suffered because he was serving his people. Yeah. So, Kwame Kumar went to jail. Mm. I mean, no leader expressed a free ride. W was there <laughs> ever a down moment? Like you introducing Get Fan, for instance, cabinet, nobody wanting to support you, and all of that. Was there a time no, no, when... I'm, I'm, I'm very resilient, highly resilient. Okay. And maybe because of the upbringing I told you about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Staying in Ghana by myself, yeah. my family all overseas, Fending for myself as a young boy mm. with my little bank account, <laughs> you know, learning to live without my parents, financial support you at the never age of 16. Give up. So I, I don't give up easily okay. at all. At all. I'm highly resilient. <laughs> and somebody said intrepid, one of my friends, a very, very small but big word. <laughs> I, fear, so, I but, fear zero. But, but in 2006, you put yourself up for the flag bearership uh, contest. It may have been a mistake. Of, of the NDC. It may have been a mistake. Because you, my friend... You were very confident. I, and I was. a lot of people were rooting for you well, as well. What I was. happened? Um, well, and I, I did that partly because my own very good friend, Pro Professor Mills, had been telling me okay. for almost five, six years that I call. Let me join him there. Okay. Now, I'm into my man. I'm going to say my support. Okay. And unfortunately, he also said that to a number of people. Oh. Who then used that against me. Okay. With him. Mm. And so, I, I, at this time, even though the jury is out until my day of departure mm. from Earth, I think that decision may have been an error. Okay. Just because I didn't want, I didn't need to put myself Up in a. That conflicting situation with mm -hmm. a very good friend. Mm -hmm. But ma, uh, f fortunately, President Mills did not find that offensive at all. Okay. Especially because I came and campaigned for him after I lost the election. Yeah. I came five times yeah. to Ghana at my own cost mm -hmm. and raised $1 million in cash for him. Oh, wow. On one occasion, when I raised that money for him, he looked at it and said, wow. Okay. He stood up like a jack in the box. Wow. And then he said that, oh, man, we're foreign minister. Okay. So when he became president, the next day after he was sworn into office, as the first person he saw, first Ghanaian, he saw a delegation from the UK who mm. had to see him. Mm. And he repeated to me that I come to the Foreign for Minister. Oh, wow. But some other people had different ideas. So that, that also didn't happen. Interesting. Yeah. So do you still have political ambitions? I mean, I mean presidential ambitions. But some people believe I, I can be a good president, yes. Okay. So would you put yourself up for the contest? The, the, jury, the, jury, the jury is out. <laughs> the jury is out. Well, I think now we have a lot of wonderful people mm. already putting themselves up, but the party has not really invited any contestants to show Yet. their faces. Mm. But we know from what is happening and the photographs that are showed that our former president, Mama, will likely be a candidate. Mm. We also hear that Dr. Kabuna Dufour will likely be a candidate. Mm -hmm. I've seen billboards of my friend Kujo Bonsu okay. also hoping to be a candidate. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll watch out for them. Well, do you but be my a attitude, candidate no, my, when it's My opened. view is that whereas in the past I may have listened to my advice and advice of a, a another smaller group of people mm. to put myself forward, I'd rather ask for more rigorous analysis to see. Because there's no point in running if you're not going to win. Yep. And if there's a better person than you who can do the job mm. better than you, why not? So would you throw your weight behind... Um, Candidate Mahama, for instance. That's a possibility. I've Why heard not? a lot of um, your people, uh, NDC members who say he's the best candidate to lead you in that uh, well, election. Well, he's, he's, he's certainly one of the best at this time, but we need a discussion and debate as to what has, has led to the losses where he loses by 2, 3, 4%. Okay. So that conversation is an internal conversation, mm -hmm. and I want to be part of that conversation so we understand what took place and what we must remedy 
to make sure that if he is the candidate, he wins. Okay. I don't I wouldn't like like him to lose. Okay. He's a very good friend of mine. Okay. So if, if he is going, then you may not you may as it's well not all lose. the possibilities, everything's on the table. Okay. It's to you see, don't don't forget that we are warring against another opponent. Definitely. So you are asking me for my team's mm -hmm. football strategy mm -hmm. before the World Cup. Okay. And it may not be <laughs> smart to be for me to tell it to be telling you and the people of Ghana the NDC strategy because it is yet to the people only elected recently mm -hmm. new general secretary new national organizer new chairman and Definitely. all that they have to get themselves organized mm -hmm. there'll be a, a point when the party will open the gate for those who want to be mm -hmm. flag bearers to come forward yep. and then we'll have to discuss intensively you know why this person will be the best for all of us okay. because we want to put a horse that use the word horse mm -hmm. who can win the race okay and if it's mahama why not if so it's do for why not if it's me why not you, I mean, you are with a winning team i'm with a winning team yes definitely as definitely. long as the person can win uh, definitely <laughs> and uh, we wish you all the best uh, once you. again in 2024 yes. but i must say at 70 you look very healthy what's your secret oh <laughs> i went walking with my wife this morning we, right. we have a certain tall hill <laughs> in our neighborhood okay and we walk it up several times a week okay and I, I play my favorite table tennis as well uh -huh. with a, a former national champion mm -hmm. and um, even once in a while i beat him and he's always surprised <laughs> you know but that game requires a certain amount of skill which okay. hand eye coordination just watching a ball mm -hmm. moving very very fast yes. so it helps your eyes to move very very fast mm -hmm. and your footwork has to also has to be okay. fast mm -hmm. and um i occasionally dance okay. we had a end of year party just in this in the back here and uh -huh. I, I put my your my, dancing my moves skills. Together. Oh my goodness. That's also good <laughs> exercise. You know. So you do dance sometimes. Well, I, I think people, most people think I, I'm a good dancer. You're a good dancer. I have to admit to that. Okay, so you listen to music a lot. You Very love much music. So. Yeah. I, I, you know, I know the big, the big artists in those days when I used to be in the United States, but uh -huh. I must admit that even though my good friend um, Kim Promise, you know, I love his songs, for example, Kofi Kinata, okay. I, love his, I love his songs. Okay. And then many of those tomboy and others mm -hmm. you know so i follow a lot of the artists and i enjoy them they are very good very creative Quite and the creative industries i think is one of the economic you know areas where our young people mm -hmm. talent can blossom very easily because it has very you know easy to enter mm -hmm. um no very not many barriers of entry mm -hmm. as long as you have talent yep. you can sing you can dance you can walk you can joke you know you can cook all those things you can sew so people who are graduates the minister of finance told us it will take up to 10 years for somebody who graduates these days to get a job up to 10 years <laughs> so every year only 10 percent <laughs> will get a formal job mm. either in the private sector or in the public sector mm. so it is very very important that's why abcd does yeah. these mentorship for programs young people, for young people to uh, uh, be appreciative and be aware mm. of the current economic circumstance of mm -hmm. ghana and the fact that you should now depend as, as much on your own talent as possible mm. and everybody will find a talent that they have photography camera work all talent you know beauty mm -hmm. um, arrangements yeah, sewing yeah. Mm -hmm. clothes P personal talents that can you get your job develop. very very easily You're rather so than waiting right. for a, some kind of yeah. you know official letter to come to you and you sit in an, an office and as a bureaucrat no, no. Office those, and those jobs are gone and, and all of that yeah. <laughs> so it's so good. talking about your kids, which among them is following your steps? Well, they are all doing it from different points of view. Uh -huh. uh, but I guess my daughter is the one that formally is working at African Women Bank and okay. has risen to the point of chief of financial products. Oh, wow. So in the formal world, I guess she's the one that is following my steps. But my other son, Sebastian, writes very powerful analytical reports okay. on various subjects mm -hmm. as a consultant uh, mm, um, based yeah. in Switzerland now uh, originally was in Canada for a while okay. um, and my other son mm -hmm. also is following another part of my skills which was selling uh -huh. I, I believe selling is probably the best <laughs> profession anybody <laughs> or career anybody may may aspire to and, uh -huh. and the, my, my, my last son is in the human resource management and okay and, uh, they, they all have a business. bit they have a bit of you in, which, in their is, own ways. which is really good. So, in which of ways. the songs are you singing for me? Nyamisumia, <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, one of the okay. other songs. We can do that. <laughs>
I'm really, really happy that we had this conversation. I must <laughs> say we appreciate you a lot. Keep up the good work and contribute your quota to make Ghana a better place. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, I'll be bringing you another fascinating <laughs> edition of PM Personality Profile. My beautiful dress was made by Needle Trade Designs. Call them on 0543-196451 or visit their showroom at Tesano West Loop. My name is Aisha Brian. Many thanks for watching.